Hi, I'm Andrew, and I love marble ones. You know what marble ones are. They're those plastic and wooden toys that you get. You can connect together in various shapes and forms. They're very creative, and you're making little roller coasters for your marbles, watching them whiz around and clack things and make bells ting and stuff. And because I have a 10-year-old, I have ready access to a marble one, and I like playing with it. And when I play with it, these are the steps that I go through. The first step is the concept of the idea phase, and uh, I don't always make a diagram of this, but I thought I'd do it for you. This time I want to make a marble run that goes long and straight and it uses all of my round pieces and it goes as long and straight as I possibly can. Once you have the idea, the next step is to prototype it. Uh, put it put it all together, pick um, a small collection of pieces to demonstrate the idea, drop a few marbles in, see that it works, and I can figure out from this that, yeah, that things are working pretty well. And I'm happy to go on to the next stage to start building things properly. And then very quickly, we run into problems often when we're playing around with marble runs, that we don't quite have enough pieces to realise the vision that we had. I here don't have enough poles to actually support all the ramps that I wanted to use. Uh, and that could be a problem. We can stop and we can look at it. We just like trash this and throw it all away and start with something new. Or we can de-scope. We can try and support still the core ideas of our marble run, but we're going around the edges, we're going to compromise. Uh, and as long as these things, ramps are being supported, it doesn't really matter that it's being supported by proper marble run pieces or not. The next step then is to actually finish shipping the marble run, like making sure all the plastic pieces are clicked together properly, fixing any bugs, like I've put the ramp on here in the, in the wrong way around, making sure everything's stable and supported and then finally once you've got it all together you can put it out the door and ship it and give it to your small round hard glass children who will never fully tell you how much fun they're having uh, but obviously tell you every time it breaks every time they drop on the floor and it's one of the great tragedies of marble runners that you can never run your own marble run you can kind of see what I'm getting at here, though. As game developers, these stages, concepting, prototyping, iterating, descoping, shipping, being hard, and then finally releasing your product to the world, this sounds familiar to us because this is game development. Marble Run is game development. But then that's an interesting consequence here. If we're saying that Marble Run is game development, and if we know that Marble Run is a game, does that mean like, is the consequence of this that game development is also a game? And to solve this, we're going to need the help of academia. This is Jasper Jewell. He is a Danish researcher. I hope I'm saying his name right. He's done a lot of research on uh, games and what it means to have fun. And he's come up with a bunch of categories uh, that give us a good sense of what a game is. He calls them his expectations of a game because what he's saying here isn't that these are hard and fast rules it didn't if you don't meet these you're not a game but this is generally what people think of when they think about a game and if your things match these then maybe you're a game uh, and we're going to go through those we're going to break them all down one by one but before we get to that there are some terms we have to come up with it's going to get a little confusing at times because i'm going to be talking about the game by which i mean game development I'm going to be talking about the player, by which I mean the video game developer themselves. I'm going to be talking about the outcome, which is also a game because it's a shipped final video game. And I try and keep these clear in my head but uh, as I speak, uh, but I have every hope that you can do it. Number one, fixed rules. And this is the idea that can we start playing this game and not start and stop to argue in the middle about whether we're doing it correctly. And as long as you're not talking to Jonathan Blow, I think this is true about video games. You uh, we just pick our tools and we make a video game. Those are the rules. Number two, verifiable, quantifiable outcomes. This is saying the video game that we've produced from the game of game development, is it, uh, do different runs produce different video games? And these are all video games that we see on the screen. Some of these are, uh, these are all classics. Um, and we can see that they're all very, very different. They have different audiences, different mechanics. Number three, values associated with each outcome. Can you take any two outcomes of the game of game dev and can you rank them and stack them and compare them? And there are many ways to do this. Metacritic would be one way. I'm not saying this is the most moral way or the most correct way. 
uh, you could make your own argument for how you want to do it, but we can say it can be done. Number four, player effort. Do you hit a button and sit back and wait for the video game to pop out the other end? No. We all know as game developers, it takes sweat and blood and tears to produce a video game. Uh, so we can definitely tick this box that yeah, things take player effort. Number five, player attachment. Again, this one I think needs no argument. Player attachment is saying, are you attached to the outcome of the game? Are you happy when you're playing a game? Are you attached to the game itself? Or are you ambivalent about it? And I think anyone who's even made a small game jam knows that they're very attached to the thing that comes out the other end. The final quality is negotiable consequences, which is really only here so that Jasper Jewel can define war as not a game because there is a non-negotiable consequence of playing war that if you lose, you die. And being as video games are war, although sometimes it can feel like that, we can kind of hand wave this and say, yeah, we pass negotiable consequences. So there you go. Fixed rules, verifiable quantifiable outcomes, values associated with each outcome, player effort, player attachment and negotiable consequences. We tick all of those, which means that game development is, according to Yule's expectations, a game. Uh, so next time you meet someone, you say you're a game developer and they say, is it fun playing video games all day? You can say, yeah, actually, yeah, it is. Thank you very much.